One of the great applications for the Egan Relay Hub is to switch lights on your vehicle. And it doesn't matter if it's lights that are running off the start battery, like your driving lights, or if it's lights from your house battery, like your camping lights. You can either switch it from one or the other, or you can mix power supplies and have uh, the relays working from the start battery and the secondary battery. The only difference that you will have with these is that you mount the relay hub inside the cab. Really good positions for that will be under the seats or if it's a utility vehicle on the back wall of your cab. That way all your relays and all the connections are out of harm's way when it comes to water and mud and dust and all you need is a power supply from the start battery going into the cab. You need a feed from your high beam, just one to go to this unit and then you just need the cables that run to the lights that you want to switch and I'll explain to you now in a practical example how you can switch your driving lights. This simulates our driving light. We've also got a relay here that we'll be inserting. This is our switch that we're going to be using to switch the driving light on. And this power supply here is simulating our start battery. So when we're wiring driving lights, we generally connect them to the start battery of a vehicle. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be connecting the start battery to this connector here to the main supply. The cool thing is you don't have to crimp anything. All you need to do is take the insulation of the cables and then you just tighten the connectors up. These are proper lifting connectors. So it means the screw is not pushing onto the copper. There's a lifter that is actually being pulled up and it is like crimping, but without having to do the crimp and without the need for the crimping tool. And the good thing is you can undo the crimp again, but it's just as strong as a normal crimp. So with that, we've now got our start battery connected. The next thing we do is we're going to connect our driving light and we'll be using uh, circuit number one, which is connected to alt supply one, supply one, load one, switch input one and load output one. So everything's labeled positive and negative on the board. I'm, I'm now going to connect the load to load number one on the load output of the relay hub. Same thing screw connectors here with lifters which give you a very very good connection there's torque specs in the user manual you can actually tighten these up quite tight 0.6 newton meters which is a lot more than you expect these here are 1.5 newton meters the main connector so the next thing that we need is we need a switch. The next thing we're going to do is we hook up the switch. The way this works is we have got the power output of the switch. We've got the power input of the switch and we've got the ground that is supplying the switch so that the control light works. If you want to have driving lights hooked up, the power supply to the switch would be coming from your high beam circuit. So as soon as you turn your high beams on, this cable will get power from your high beam. Power will go through the switch and it will come out and feed into the switch input. To simulate a driving light scenario, I will only connect the switch output to switch input number one and I'll tighten it. And the power supply and the ground I will connect directly to our power supply. So this simulates ground for the start battery circuit. And this here simulates the high beam signal, which we just got to connect directly to our power supply. The only things left to do now is to put a relay into the relay base. And we are using all the circuits that are labeled one. So we put the relay into relay base number one, where it says load one. And of course, we need a fuse into supply one. 
and after that we're ready to turn on the power. What we've got here now is our start battery input. We've got our driving lights connected to load one. We have got our driving light switch and our high beam signal. We've got a relay in relay base number one and we've got a fuse and supply one. So when I turn the power on, what we're expecting is that we can turn this light on as soon as we turn the switch on and we've got high beam signal. So as soon as we turn this on, obviously we will have the high beam signal. Turn it on. We've got voltage. We haven't got smoke coming out, it's always a positive. So the high beam is now on, but the switch is still off. So as soon as I turn this on, we've got our driving lights turning on and you can see there's a little indicator on the circuit board here that indicates that the relay has switched on. That also works even if the light is disconnected. So just in case you've got a scenario where you've got everything connected, you got the light on, you know that your whole circuit up until this point works okay, but the fault has to be somewhere further down the track, like you haven't put the plug in, for example. Putting the plug back in, light turns on, and in this scenario, as soon as you would turn the high beam off, I can simulate that by pulling this cable out. Obviously the light will switch off. You put high beam back on, the light will switch back on. So this is the most simple way of hooking up driving lights to your relay hub. So you can have another light bar wired up now. For example, you could have another relay in there, another switch, and you have a light bar that also turns on with high beam. So it would use the same signal to your switch, run it through the switch, put it to switch input number two, hook the light bar up to load number two, put a fuse into supply two, put a relay in here, and straight away, as soon as the switch is on, high beam is on, your light bar would work as well. But if you now got a few lights on the side of your vehicle and you want to run them off your secondary battery because you also want to use them while you're stationary, what you can do is you can use supply three and you use an external fuse coming from your DC hub, for example, or whatever other power distribution system you're using or just a fuse directly from your house battery and you put that power supply into alt supply number three. Do not put a fuse in because you're using an external fuse. Put a relay into relay base number three. You can now use a switch input into number three and you connect your camping lights into load number three. And now you have got your camping lights or your work lights hooked up to load number three, running off your house battery while your driving lights are working through the start battery. And obviously you can do that vice versa. If your main power supply should be your house battery, you would use this supply from your house battery and you just run separate supplies from your start battery into three, four or five and you just leave the fuses out and fuse them on the battery where you connect them to. Another cool feature is just in case your switching system breaks or there's something wrong with it and you want to test if everything else is okay, you've got these override switches. As soon as you turn them on, no matter what's happening on the switch side of things here, you can just override. As soon as you turn this switch on, it disconnects the external switch circuit from the board and you're controlling everything from the board itself now. Just in case you've got an external fault somewhere and you're relying on having to switch the circuit on, you can just on the board itself or if you want to do fault finding, this is another great feature for it. This concludes the driving light scenario. In the next scenario, we explain to you how you can use this switching system directly off your house battery or off your Egan DC hub.